Hello, House of Mass Reviews here, and let's get on to the next, to today's, to the review of today, which is What If Season 2. And let's get on with it. So, the first, as you all know, I loved What If Season 1. I absolutely adored it. In, in my view, it's What If is the MCU, is my favorite show of the MCU. I, the first season was just, I, I loved, I loved it. I mean, yeah, there was some, yeah, not all the episodes were winners, but they're all consistently on, consistently good, and the and the the great moments were fantastic. I mean, I can go back and watch. Uh, I've watched season one a ton of times on Disney Plus. So, I, and I watch my favorite episodes a lot. Like I love um, Star Lord to Chatla. I love the strange, strange, strange Supreme. I love um, the zombie episode. Um, yeah, it was a fun series, and I was really looking forward to season two and. Every time I got delayed because of all the, you know, the reschedules of of products uh, of you know of the shows, whether it be because of critical reception, the writers' strike, COVID, COVID halts, and all that, I was just like, oh come on, give me my what if season two. And well, finally, after the last after the end of the conclusion of the writers' and actors' strike, we finally got it announced for the end for it to be spring. Pretty much streamed in a whole entire week for the last whole entire last week of twenty twenty three. Okay. Um, I will say this though. I think it would have been. I would have liked it. It would have been good if I had done the weekly thing with episodes like the dev season one. Who knows? Maybe I'll do that with season three. Yeah. But you know, for what it is, you got to get it out, and fair enough. But uh, let's just say this. Um, for what do I think of season two? Well, there are some stuff that still is it's still good, but it's not as perfect in my view as season as season one. I mean, it's not bad. It's still a good, great show. But compared to the, there is there are some things I have to be very critical over with this, just because of how much I think season one it still is the best. It's still so perfect. Um, so basically, again, we're seeing alternate realities born from set from different decisions from the MCU across the multiverse. We see some characters return from the first series, like obviously uh, that we that we got that we grew to know from from their episodes. Like we obviously the Watcher's still back. Um, we see Captain Captain Carter gets um, gets a bit. Continues to get explored a bit more. We see Strange Supreme again, and we finally get the uh, Thanos killing Gamora episode that we were waiting for because it got pushed back due to the COVID of, due to being displayed by you know COVID halts in from season one. Um, let's, but uh, yes, yeah. and we also get new realities. We see a world where Nebula's now in sh working for Nova Corp. She was apparently saved by them at the end of, well, captured by a captured, saved by them going to the galaxy. We see what would happen if the Avengers assembled both in the in the nineteen eighties as well as the sixteen hundreds. Okay, uh, we see what would happen if Hela was was found by a uh, Wen Wu. Uh, in in the past, we get a. We get one where Happy Hogan has to save Avengers Tower from being raped by Justin Hammer, with Sam Rockwell back as him. <laughs> Boy, was that a what was that a great a fun time seeing him in this? Like, I'm just gonna say, uh, Sam Rockwell back as Justin Hammer. I didn't think I was gonna. I was like, okay, sure, you bring him back. All right, Justin Hammer. All right, yeah, yeah the dance dance scene and you know, I mean, too, whatever. But she's always seems so fun in, in the episode he's in. And we get to see a new original character in the form of Kahori, a Native American who 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 gets sent to an alternate to an alternate world by the Tesseract. That's yeah, and yeah. But moving on, uh, we get. Um, but let's talk about what still is good. Let's start off the animation, which is f improved a lot. It, it looks a lot more shinier. Um, it's clear to say they. They saw they improved the style that they emulated that they created for the first for season one and elevated it a bit more. It's a lot brighter and 
for some episodes it works really well. Maybe so for the ones from that involve characters that we've that we previously seen in in season one. Maybe they could have. Uh, I don't know. I would say they look terrible. They, they still look good, but I. I don't know. I kind of like the way they looked in season one. Uh, the the voice acting continues to be great. Every character that every actor they brought main actor they brought back from the from the MCU is, uh, continues to voice the voice of the alternate counterpart really well. Um, and some and some it's always good to see hear them play these characters. I think it's actually I found in fact some actually get a lot, uh, I think a bit more improved. Like um four like Chris Hemsworth voicing four and not. A 1980s version of Thor in in that in one episode um, is great, and um, you get um, as I love Kate Blanch Kate Blanchett's Hella and her episode is great. As I said, I love Sam Rockwell and Cor uh, Taika Waititi continues to do well as Korg and Michael Douglas and is great is great as a more as a friend as a as an actual as a, an alternate version of Hank Pym as Ant Man. I love. Um, uh, Lawrence Fishburne returning as um, Bill Foster is great. Um, I think, and I think my favorite, uh, and actually, if I gotta say, it's How the Duck. I mean, Seth Green, Seth Green is great as Howard, but the Duck is one of the most consistent things they do right in in What If. I mean, I'm starting to want a new uh, the MCU to actually do a How the Duck TV series or or movie. Just give it another shot. We forgot about the George Lucas uh, cinema cinema tr uh, cinema atrocity from the nineteen eighties. Just give us something good with this with a new Howard. Eh? They've done it pretty well. Give it a shot. <laughs> just give them. Just let the writers of What If do it, and you know, consult with James Gunn a little, or I don't know. Just do it. I I wouldn't mind seeing how the Duck yeah, TV series. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, the character interactions are all good, especially with new with new character dynamics. Um. I love Kahori. She's an original. She's a great original character, and I would like to see her get more screen time when they do a season three. The expansion they they expand a lot on Captain Carter, um, and Haley Atwell. You can tell is definitely enjoying voicing this this rendition of the character. The Gamora episode waited a long time for it. it was great, but I think it was rewritten slightly. I think it could have. Yeah, you can tell maybe it was re rewritten a little bit. I'm just saying, although it's not too bad, it's still a good episode, and, and Jeff Goldblum is great as the Grandmaster. He's <laughs> always great as the Grandmaster. I should also mention two other voice actors that, that I really liked um, in this. Uh, one, well, actually, I should mention one. is um, uh, Young T'Chaka in, in the 1980s Adventures episode. He is... I really enjoyed him, and especially, and it's more interesting the fact that they actually got uh, the the actor of John, the actor for T'Chaka in, uh, in the live action films. They got his son to voice the younger T'Chaka, and I actually really enjoyed that. I mean, it was a good good recast, great work. Um, and yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, I love the Hello episode is pers the along with the the Hori episode. The Hello episode is my personal favorite. I thought that was a great. Great one to watch, and I probably will watch it even more. Yeah, there are, there are some really good episodes in this. Like as I said, I I, I like the Gamora episode, I like the Kahori episode, I love the Heller episode. With uh, but with that said, I don't think all the episodes are on the same, at least match the same level as the ones in the first series. Like the only two, the only episode, two episodes, I was kind of a bit, uh, um. All right, like I thought, were well, there was a distinct quality level with uh, the episodes in season one. Like, yeah, there was some that were like lost, like the original, like the first Captain Cart, Captain Carter episode. I thought was okay, just because it was just basically retelling the um the story, the the events of uh the first Avenger, just with uh, the only twist being of it's now Peggy who got the Super Soldier Serum, um, and the Killmonger episode where he. Become where well, he saves Tony Stark. Um, I was like, okay, but it's just basically Killmonger's story all over again, just with the, just him changing the events, just basically him double crossing Iron Man. Well, yeah, but yeah, those were the two episodes which I thought were a little bit no, they were just okay. A lot of the episodes here are more just 
they don't re they're more on the okay to great level compared to say the more you know the fact there was a lot more great episodes with um with season with season one um yeah I, I, like I said I think like I said the Christmas episode is a fun time and giving happy Hogan more more making happy Hogan the the main character in in that episode is fine enough but I don't know, I didn't really think, all right, it could have, it was fine, but I didn't really care too much. The Nebula episode I thought could have been interesting, but they make it, they pretty much do it by numbers, by a few elements. And uh, the Avengers in in the 1600s, like, that was probably one of the episodes I was like, okay, you're expanding more Captain Carter, but, I don't know, it just, again, you can sort of guess where it's going, and how certain characters are, you know, changed how they're doing certain, making certain characters like you know characters you see in sixteen hundred Europe, like Robin Hood and all that. Yeah. Um and yeah, so I'm just saying they're not and then there's the last episode which I'll just talk which I will mention later. Um I was a little disappointed they didn't include more elements from season characters more elements and characters from season from fate from MCU phase four in this because they said they were gonna do that, but there's only really two episodes they do it. One is the first Captain Carter episode in this, where they actually have Natasha's, um, uh, I think it was, you know, Natasha's mother figure, Melina, show up in it, and it was a pretty impressive thing to make, uh, seeing her. She did, they handled her well in that episode. And the other is the Hell episode, where she meets characters from Shang-Chi, Wen Wu, and, um, you know, the, the, uh, Morris, and some of the characters in the, in Ta Lao. Yeah, that was the only two episodes they actually focused on the elements from 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 Phase Four. Now I would have liked more of it. Like you said, you're going to include it, but there's those are the only episodes they did it. Every other episode just you know doesn't doesn't have it. Um, I'm just saying. Um, you also get. I also am not a big fan of the new openings to the show. Like you basically, it's basically like um, they copied a bit of the. The, the openings from, you know, the Iron Groot miniseries. I'm not going to review that, just so, so you know. I'm never going to do the Iron Groot miniseries. I just don't think there's enough for me to talk about with that. Um, but with the exception of the final of the, of se the final episode of this season, it, it's all shorter, and even the, the actual opening that of the show, they, they sort of wait till after they describe the episode, what the episode's about in the opening few seconds, in, in the opening minute. I didn't, I didn't like that. I kind of wish I just start off the, the opening, the opening, like in the first, like in the first season. Um, certain characters are missing, like, like um, let's go over some. Um, I don't think like I think uh, I'm trying to think of who, like Cracklin. I don't think shows up, but and Yondu only gets referenced a little bit in the first two episodes, but not, but not much. Um, uh, no Captain Marvel though. Okay. Um, I can accept that. Uh, the biggest one is no Spider Man. I was, they, I was, I, I thought for sure that Peter Parker was going to be involved in an episode, and and it said so. I was going to, and I felt, and from what I gathered, it was meant, to, it was going to happen. But Spider Man doesn't appear at all in season, in season two. Like, oh, I want Spider Man. Come on, maybe they're saving Spot this Spider Man with um with the upcoming your friendly. Neighborhood Spider-Man series. Uh, why do they have to change the title? Just keep it uh, Spider-Man sophomore year. Um, also, Rocket. They, they said they're going to have Rocket Raccoon have be more prominent in the episode, and he's only in the final episode, but he doesn't speak at all. Again, you um, said he was going to get more, get be involved in a, f a big time in an episode. Give me it. Like Groot gets, they have Groot show up. I mean, in episode one, he's more involved. And he gets a lot of involvement, but geez, you're giving me, making me keep my hopes up. I would have liked more, of, um, you know, explore for the Watcher, but you know, it, it's not too bad. And Jeffrey Wright still make yeah, does a good job voicing him. Um, some episodes clearly rip off certain movies, and yeah, there were uh, movies were there were some movie storylines that were ripped off in the first series. Like you can make certain. Ocean Eleven comparisons with the T'Challa Star Wars episode. You can you can pretty much compare 
I trust many episodes of um of uh many zombie movies with the zombie episode. Um and uh college frat boy movies with with the Thor it was an only child episode, but um with this it's more blatantly obvious. Like the Nebula episode for, is clearly referencing Blade Runner. Um and you've got um like I think uh, elements of um of uh of the Gamora episode reference Speed Racer. Um and one of my I think and um the the Christmas episode is clearly Die Hard. Yeah, you can it it's more blatantly obvious what movies they're referencing with this and how you basically can't really, you know, miss it and think past it in some areas. Of, with the exception of the Speed Race one, because I don't think many people saw that Wachowski, the Wachowski Speed Race movie. <laughs> but uh, the biggest issue I have is how they handle Strange Supreme in this. Like, the final episode, like, Strange Supreme was one of my favorite characters in, in Season 1. Just basically with what they do with him. But in this, they sort of take a massive step back in his character development, in, in, in with his character, and the way it all ends with him. I'm like, there's a, there's a bit of a reference to No Way Home with what he does at the end, but I, I wouldn't really call it um, okay, uh, worth it, but I don't know. I just, I was like, I think they made, they took a massive step back with this. It would have been interesting because they set up something at the end of Kahori also with him meeting Kahori and what he wants with her. Okay, you can sort of, you can sort of go with that, but Again, it's not handled well, in my view. But, again, do I hate this season two? No, I don't. I, I still like it enough. I just don't think it's as perfect, as great as the first season. There are some things that they do a lot worse in this than... Well, they take, not really worse, but they take steps back from what, how they, what they did in season one with this. And... I think I'm not. I think it's, there, but there are some good stuff in this, and I still enjoy it a lot. I just wouldn't go back to all the episodes in this in season two compared to how much I go back on the go back and watch the episodes of season one. Is what I'm trying to say. Again, but still, I'm I still love the show, and season two, for season two, I give it an eight eight out of ten has does. Not not a nine point five like the first season, but I still enjoy enough to give it a you know positive ranking. So yeah, um, uh, but you know, and at least they came consistently with this show. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, only time will tell how the rest of Marvel's changes go with their shows. Um. Well, interesting how the other anime projects go, like Eyes of Wakanda, or Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, and the Marvel Zombies episode uh, series, which I am looking forward to. The majority of them, uh, Eyes of Wakanda, I'm not sure how that's going to be because I don't know much about it. But you know, the other two I'm excited for. Um, but of course, I've got. I think, of course, Echo comes out later this very soon, so to do that but we'll get to that look well yeah wait till that gets fully released um but what's next um you're just gonna have to wait and see actually although i think i'm gonna keep within disney i think um i believe i'm just gonna have to wait and see where what the review is whether it could be something something else or uh, what I'm planning for. Okay, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But in the meantime, as some as reviews is out, and I shall see you for my next video. Ciao!